Hello, my name is Jacob Booth and today I want to talk to you about voiceover. When to use it, how to use it, and why we decided to use it when everybody says that you shouldn't use it. And God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. We were hired to film a customer testimony for an insurance company. And this seems like a relatively easy job. You just put a camera up, a few lights, but it's deceptively difficult to make it authentic, make it believable. Why should someone watching this person tell the story believe in what they're saying? Why should they believe all of these good things about the company? And that was especially the problem with this testimony. A painter got into a car crash and it took 12 years to recover. The testimony is written from his wife who had forged such a great relationship to the insurance company that she said she was, at the end of the recovery, she was sad to say goodbye to them. It was more than just a job to them and they became a part of our new family. We never felt alone. As a letter, it was beautiful and moving, but we worried as a video it would be unbelievable, literally too good to be true. All it takes is a couple of stumbles, a couple of hesitations, and the person watching it is questioning whether these words coming out of the mouth are actually true, or is, is this just a performance to try and make the company look good? When it comes to voiceover, one thing you might be familiar with is the concept of showing, not telling. Tell me what this is all about. You'll see. Don't listen to anyone who tells you to show, not tell. No, film is not a visual medium, it's an audio visual medium. And that means that you can use any tool within the audio visual spectrum to tell your story. And you shouldn't limit yourself to rules such as never use voiceover. It does help if you know when you are telling and when you are showing and how you can use both together to tell a story. One way to tell a story rather than to show it is to use a narrator. The weary gunfighter walked slowly through the saloon. The long miles from Cheyenne had taken their toll. This is because an off-screen voice has a certain legitimacy that a presence on screen doesn't have. You have no reason to question the off-screen voice. You're listening to the story being told and you're taking it in. For the Henderson boys were waiting in the corner to kill him for the $200 bounty on his head. Is that true? You boys trying to kill me like this voice is saying? Ah, uh, no. This is why you need to be very, very aware of telling versus showing and how much of the story you do tell via voiceover narration. Part of the power of cinema is that the audience brings themselves to the film and the way they interpret things affects the way they view the film. And if you tell them everything, there's no room for interpretation. There's no re room for them to bring themselves. And, have the film really affect them in a deep way. So in creating a concept for the testimony, we really tried to remove the figure as much as possible off screen. We didn't want the audience to be questioning anything, so we didn't show them anything. My husband took a long time to recover from the car crash. He used to be a fine painter. We painted everywhere we went together. We told the entire story with voiceover and we used artist paintings as images to support the story. We ordered the paintings chronologically so that as the testimony progressed, the paintings would get better and better as the artist recovered. In this concept, we were telling two storylines. We were showing and telling at the same time. We were telling the wife's perspective of how her husband recovered and her own interactions with the insurance company. And we were showing the husband's own progress as he got better and better. And we didn't need to tell any specifics. We didn't need to say that after year two he could stand unassisted and after year seven he could leave the house on his own. When you are showing a story, not telling, it's enough for the audience to bring their own interpretations to what you are showing them and discover the story for themselves. But the upward motion of recovery is implied in the progression of the paintings and the long, long struggle is implied by the duration, the years ticking by as the paintings progress. The strength of the voiceover track is to provide commentary on what is happening in the visuals. And this is why it's a wasted opportunity to just, just say what's happening on screen. Far better to add insight, perspective or contrast to the picture. As the late, great cricket commentator, Richie Bernal said, don't talk unless you can add to the picture. They're looking for that, let alone chasing it. It's going straight 
into the confectionery stall and out again. In our concept, we are adding to the painter's journey by showing his wife's perspective. Slowly, slowly, my husband became more like his old self. With a lot of help, we started to see a little part of our life before the accident returning. Perspective is hugely important in film. Think of the difference between theatre and cinema. In theatre you have the whole scene happening in front of you. You can choose what, which part of it you can look at. You can look at this person moving around here, you can look at this object being moved in the background, you can try and watch what's happening off stage. A film uses techniques such as close-up and shallow focus to draw your eyes to different things at certain times. With this you are being shown a perspective. When using a voiceover to add to an image, think about what effect that has on the way the audience relates to the image. You can add a reflective atmosphere by having the narration come from the future looking back on the events of the past. So I let her have it straight between the eyes. She didn't fool me for a minute, not this time. You can create an enigmatic protagonist by having the voiceover come from a character who's trying to figure the protagonist out. I must admit I didn't think much of Andy the first time I laid eyes on him. It looked like a stiff breeze would blow him over. That was my first impression of the man. With this, you can create a relationship to your main character that the audience might not have felt without that voiceover narration. Sometimes there's a man, well, uh, he's the man for his time and place. He fits right in there. Most importantly, you have to ask yourself, why do you want the audience to see the film from the perspective of that voiceover? Our answer to that question was another special feature of the voiceover. This is that, at times, the narrator seems to have not only generated what they are saying, but also the images on screen that you are seeing. Now the city, it's divided into four zones, you know, each occupied by a power, the American, the British, the Russian and the French. They seem to be showing us the images. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look how this relates to my story. On the left bank, on the right bank, And in between. The narrator can seemingly become for the audience the creator of the whole film. If this is the case, then that means we are not voyeuristically and exploitatively stepping into this person's life. Instead, we are listening as they invite us to hear their story. I asked earlier why the audience should care. They care because they are being invited to. They're being asked to listen to my story. Here is my story. Here are the paintings that my husband painted. Come and listen as I tell you the journey that I went through. He used to be a fine painter. We painted everywhere we went, together. Because of the way the audience understands voiceover, they are no longer listening into a conversation. The voiceover is talking directly to them, showing them the pictures and telling them a story about them. My husband took a long time to recover from the car crash. He used to be a fine painter. We painted everywhere we went, together. The human spirit is a miracle. Even after a massive head trauma like his, he never lost his passion. But I could see his frustration. There was something missing between his head and his hands. Bit by bit, I saw it begin to come back. I left my job so I could always be there for him. Still, we needed near constant support for over a decade. There was no option. This was our life now. Slowly, slowly, my husband became more like his old self. With a lot of help, we started to see a little part of our life before the accident returning. We were looked after incredibly well. It was more than just a job to them, and they became a part of our new family. We never felt alone. They supported us, gave us advice, and ensured we always had the best care and assistance. I can surely say that we would never have got our life back from the car crash without the work of KLS Law. It sounds strange to say, but they've been such a huge part of my life that I'm sad to say goodbye. Though I'm certain we'll stay in touch, 
knowing as I do that they will do everything they can to help my family. <laughs>